All right. All right. So the next talk is from uh, Finn Hackett. Uh, Finn is a PhD student at the University of British Columbia. Uh, Finn's interests are in programming languages, formal verification, distributed systems, modeling languages, and uh, music. All right. So hi, I'm Finn, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, compiling distributed system models with Pigo. Uh, if you're wondering about the sparkling pig, just say the name a few times fast, and hopefully you'll get it. So to motivate our situation, uh, distributed systems are a common thing. Um, writing them correctly is difficult. Uh, you can have an asynchronous network, which is counterintuitive. Uh, you can have crashes in various places. You can have delays. If you, half of your system crashes, then the rest of it might still be there wondering what happened. Generally, these are all things that can happen in production systems and cause all kinds of havoc, really. Here are some uh, quick motivating examples of real uh, systems, generally cloud systems that went down and took a lot of things with them and made some headlines. So this is, no one's safe really. So how do we fight this? We're taking the approach of talking about this in terms of protocol descriptions. So this isn't like finding null pointer errors or something, this is more so you have a distributed protocol such as uh, some kind of consensus or some kind of other thing that requires communication and various patterns. But then when you describe it, you realize, well, there's a lot of edge cases here. Uh, many of them lack precise kind of resolutions, uh, especially in the abstract domain. And so when you deal with these, you might have figured out how your protocol is supposed to work mathematically, but then you look at trying to make an implementation and the protocol description doesn't really tell you exactly what to do in a bunch of cases. So in production implementations, people just sort of have to figure it out. And this can be ad hoc and might not do what the implementer thinks, potentially. Formal verification can help us with this. Um, so you can use proof assistance to v prove various system properties. Um, it takes a fair amount of effort and expertise, months to years to get this right. But there has been a reasonable amount of success on a variety of domains. Uh, on, the other on the other hand, if you don't want to write a lot of math, you can also uh, model check your implementation, do like various kinds of systematic tracing and debugging. And essentially this family of systems is going to take your system and f try to sort of partially execute it and explore various behaviors, which because it's a real full implementation, it's going to have a fair amount of computational complexity to it, but that with some heuristics can be effective. What we're trying to do here, the uh, ver verification tool chain we're using, is based on exhaustive design level model checking. And what this means is we're going to use TLA, Pluscal, or possibly TLAPS, not that we do so in practice here, uh, to check uh, an abstract specification of our system, like with the uh, proof assistance, but instead we do bounded exhaustive model checking where we check every possible behavior up to a certain point which uh, can often find a lot of bugs, even if it's not exactly making a proof. Though to highlight, we do support explicit proofs, we just don't do it in this particular work. So that being said, you have your formal verification, you have your specification, your problem is still getting to the implementation. You have your design, hopefully your design has been well vetted by this point, but you're still not sure how to implement it. The solution that we're proposing is to just compile the design. Pigo, in a nutshell, is you take that thing, you compile it into an implementation, and the specification is going to be relatively abstract, relatively simple to express in terms of not requiring huge amounts of code, and as a result, relatively low effort in terms of verification and specification. Then. In theory, you get your implementation automatically from that verified model. To walk through a little bit the kind of architecture, Pigo appears in two places here. So as a human, you write the modular plus cal, sorry, that's our verification language, modular plus cal model. And what you can do is you can use Pigo to convert it into TLA plus and reason about it. Check it through, just run all the different combinations, write properties, do whatever you want. 
Then you can also use Pico, assuming you've properly figured out your design, to generate a Go program that, with the appropriate configuration, can be deployed and run as a performant, realistic, distributed system. So, um, to give kind of a proper mental image of uh, what MPCAL looks like, the modeling language that we've extended based on TLA plus and PlusCAL ecosystems, um, to give you a picture, we've got state variables like uh, the network, we've got processes like that server there, uh, processes aren't, strictly speaking, either OS processes, different nodes, or threads. They're any of these. It's your choice. And we also have a key abstraction method. So you can write a server, which is parameterized off this thing called a network, which represents, you guessed it, the network. Um, and what we have is the ability to separate how the network is imagined to behave formally, which can be modeled however you like at that point, and the actual references to the network in our algorithm, the part we actually want to compile. So bottom left, you compile that. The right-hand side, you don't compile that. Quickly switching to a cheat sheet, I'll point out a couple little things that are important to know about MPCAL that might be unfamiliar if you're used to regular programming languages. So there are two kind of weird statements you can make, aside from like assignments and you know the usual stuff. Um, await allows you to essentially say, unlike implementation level async await, which is coroutines and completely different, you can basically say, if this condition is not true, stop. Do not perform this series of events. And also, you can say, either do this or that, with no conditional. So you can basically just have it pick one. These are great for modeling. They're very sort of mathematical level properties. But you can actually write them in this modeling language, and we have to compile them. Coming next slide. For those who aren't familiar with TLA+, note that our properties can be quite sophisticated. You can describe temporal relationships like always and eventually, and basically write whatever you need to write to explain what your correctness conditions are. And as I said before, our contribution here is the dependency injection and abstraction primitives on the bottom right. You have these archetypes, which are templates for like processes, nodes, threads, or whatever. Resources are dependencies that you can inject both abstractly to reason about your system with kind of a fake version of your dependencies, and then to actually implement your system with a real optimized version of those dependencies. To quickly cover some implementation challenges that you can read the paper to see in more detail, as I mentioned before, non-determinism is tricky. There, there's not a real thing in uh, implementation level languages, so we had to re-implement it. Um, the await, the either or and await use a transaction-like retry mechanism to perform their effects uh, in real code. And that on its own, fine, okay, you can do that. We also had to do this in combination with providing efficient I.O. to actually make practical systems. So we'll need things like network access, disk serialization, timer support, also failure detectors is an important one that we needed. Um, and to do that, we built a general API that allows us to insert different things in the context of retry transaction-like behavior. That was a tricky thing that we describe various insights into and various weakenings you can do in the paper. Lastly, we used the well-known hash array mapped try construct from functional programming to be able to efficiently manipulate immutable values in a practical programming language without having to do a bunch of copying. Moving on to the implementation and evaluation. Again, there's a lot that I can't talk about in the time that I have, but we implemented a runtime and a compiler, and we implemented multiple systems to test to see how our system does. The ones I'm going to talk about are Pigo Raft KV mod and Pigo Raft KV. To get into these, these are Raft based key value stores um, written in MPCAL. And if you look at the architecture there, that's. Um, just basically there to show you that these are real complex systems that we actually built and they're representative of the kind of system design you might want for a core key value store, for example. This took us uh, 25 days to write. Uh, it's about 750 lines of code at the specification level. And I will scare you for a moment and explain 1,000 lines of glue and I.O. code. Now, of course, you don't have to write 1,000 lines of glue and I.O. code to implement 750 lines of spec code. That's not how that works. Most of this is I.O. code, uh, sorry, is library code 
that is pre-implemented and reusable. So what you really have to do is to write, you know, about 100 lines of config code to glue everything together, and most of our implementation effort there is actually reusable. So don't be too scared by that. Anecdotally, it took us about three times less development time to write the system than our closest related work, Ivy, which is still cool, check it out. Um, and it took us about, for our final model checking run, it took us about 404 minutes to model check with three servers and various limitations placed on the number of transactions to explore so we could cover all the space. Lastly, uh, Pigo Raft KV mod, um, I didn't forget about it, that's, um, a modularization of the same system. So for any big system, if you want to model check it, your state space and the amount of computation you need to cover that state space grows exponentially. So eventually, you're just going to write a system too big and you just fall over. So what we want to check is can we split systems up into different parts so we can reasonably model check them in practice separately and not have the exponential growth problem. So we did that as a prototype. It is not a core feature, but we did it and we think it's nice. Our main um, highlight um, figure is our, our evaluation on the YCSB Yahoo database benchmark. Um, and we tested ourselves, Pigo Raft KV, Ivy's Raft implementation, the modularized version, the Iron KV um, multi pack source implementation, and the Vardy uh, Raft Key Value Store implementation. Uh, you'll notice that. Uh, our core Pigo Raft KV implementation generally does better or about the same than related work. This is because we got to spend a lot more time on refining the I.O. and adding multi-threading support relative to proof effort and other things like that. Um, also, you'll notice that our modularized version is about middle of the pack. It still performs decently well despite being a relatively quickly thrown together prototype with extra communication overhead between the two parts. So we think that's a nice kind of result too, and we leave actually refining that to future work. My second uh, figure I'd like to show is our failure recovery, which we do support, both at the specification level and at the implementation level at the same time. We do this with failure detectors. Read more in the paper. So here this shows you throughput over time for a single run with read, on, read and update throughput tracked separately. And we basically went in and killed the leader and show that it can notice, re-elect a new leader, and keep on going. And then we kill a follower, and we notice that it just keeps on going because in Raft, follower death doesn't cause any drop in throughput much. Our contributions, therefore, are bridging system models in MPCAL with an implementation, which is new for the TLA plus space. We have support for concurrent models and non-determinism. And we address the challenge of moving from declarative modeling with verification to a performant implementation. We've specifically shown a Raft-based key value store that's faster than, faster than verified alternatives. And we're generally getting closer to verified disputed systems. Also, we learned yesterday that our artifact received the Distinguished Artifact Award. In any case, it's open source. Check it out. And thank you for your time. Any questions?